A place in the quarterfinals of the Ladies Football Championship will be up for grabs on Saturday when Waterford and Tyrone do battle in Mullingar from 3.30. Earlier in the week I spoke to Daisha attacker Roisin Tobin and I asked her firstly about last week's heavy defeat to All-Ireland Champions Dublin. Look, I suppose we would have been, we are really disappointed after last Saturday's game. Um, I suppose maybe touching on maybe a little bit more annoyed even than anything. Um, we held pretty well in the first half and we performed. I kind of wearing, felt in control, you know, the game and that, that second half, that first, the first goal really, like it was, I think it was kind of the first minute or two, you know, it really just put a bit of a, a pin kind of in our game a little bit and I think we just found it tricky to come back from that, even though we had handled the goal in the first half so well and responded really well. I just think we didn't respond as well as what we could have have done. And overall, I suppose we're disappointed with ourselves. You know, there's a lot of potential in that team. And, you know, we would have prepared really well and have expected more from ourselves. And I suppose having analysed the game, which is, is quite an important aspect nowadays, um, you know, the goal chance we coughed up, we, we kind of look back and you can see that maybe it was a case of not marking properly or being not marking tight enough and just, you know, being a little bit lacking, a little bit of concentration maybe for that split second. And I guess when you are playing playing five-time All-Ireland Champions, you can't give that time, you know, you can't assume I have a second. You really need to be, you know, on your game all the time. But, you know, overall, look disappointed, but ready to go again, hopefully now for next week. How did you find playing in that sweltering heat last Saturday, Rogin? Oh, it was tough, you know. Um, I suppose myself and the girls have all played on hot days before, but that temp- those temperatures last weekend were another level up, you know, and it was quite hot and it was kind of, you were kind of playing Dublin, but you were also playing the heat at the same time, you know, and you were trying to bat away the thoughts of oh, so hot in your head, you know, that kind of way, but... You know, look, we got there, we handled kind of well enough, got to half time and, you know, cooled down and recuperated. And, you know, we just had to drive on again and go with it. And there were many other teams in both codes, I suppose, playing at the, um, in that heat at the weekend. And you just had to try and, you know, think about it for a little bit and then process it and say, right, we're all in the same situation and go on. But it was tough. And I suppose, you know, coming towards the end of the game, it starts to hit the body a little bit more in terms of being tired and being thirsty. A lot of the times the hydration was a big factor last week and getting into getting the water in. I suppose one of the pluses out of last Saturday's performance, Roisin, was the displays of Maria Delahunty and Emer Fennell up front. Like, Emer got 1 2 in, in that first quarter, she was on fire. Maria Delahunty finished up at seven points. How much of a, a boost have they been to the panel this year since they returned? Look, they've been, they have been a, a, a really good boost, you know, that kind of way. I suppose last year we were without, and we you know everyone had to step up to the plate, and we have been confident coming in again this year. And I suppose, you know, we had extra people then coming back this year and transitioning into that and getting that group ready again. So we've had a lot of experience, I suppose, come back onto the panel, which is great, you know. And Emer is a really hard worker, you know. She's all the time getting out in front and doing what she can and uh, taking on her player and, and is confident and growing in confidence, you know, with scores like that. And had a really fabulous goal scorer last week, you know. It was brilliant and it gave us a really good boost. And, and Maria is, you know, she's has experience and has real level-headed, you know, and cool on the ball and is a great free taker and you know it, it does that really well and it's also clever with it you know so like that's great to have up there and you know to have that experience and that the girls you know they know exactly what they're doing and we'll be doing our best next weekend to try and feed them the ball as much as they can I suppose maybe come the second half last week we would have lacked getting the ball into them to leave them do what they need to do but on the other hand Dublin work quite good defensively so you know, that'll be something we'll be taking a look at for, for next weekend. This is a real winner-takes-all clash, Roisin. Like, Tyrone also went down to Dublin in the group stages. How much do you know about them? God, we haven't played Tyrone in a long time. Um, I think it would have been under Pat Sullivan's charges there about four, maybe five years ago. We played them in the league game up in Tyrone. And that was also a close encounter. I think we kind of won narrowly by maybe a point or two. Um, I think now, if, and even at that, we may have lost it by a point. But I know... In that game, we were in control like that again the first half and it was the second half performance. Tyrone came out and really drove it on. Um, so we wouldn't have met them very often, but we would be aware of them to be quite physical um, and to kind of kind of take the approach of a blanket defence like they did against Dublin. So, you know, a big thing for us will be figuring out how we're going to break that down, that mass defence. And it's quite a, you know, in both codes of the game, this, this these days it's real central thing, this blanket defence. And, uh, forwards and the whole teams trying to take it down. So, you know, that'll be something we'll be looking at is how we can try and break that down and, and you know, gather up scores and keep the, the keep the board ticking over. But they would be quite a physical, strong team, you know, and uh, really up for the challenge. As you said, it's, it's a winner-take-all. So 
it's either that or you're facing relegation from August, end of August, you know, and who wants that after the year that they put in, you know, so we'll be looking forward to it. Just to bring it back a couple of years, Roisin, I remember you coming into the studio in Dungarvan in, back in 2018, just after you suffered the crucious knee ligament injury and you were vice captain um, that particular year. How challenging was that for yourself to come through? Uh, look, it was it was tough, you know. Um, actually, you know, in the gym this morning, kind of looking back and thinking back on it, but it was, I see somebody else recovering from one too. Like, but it was hard. It was really it was hard, you know. It was tough. You were kind of going back to the beginning, really, like you know, and trying to figure out like, what am I going to do? Will I ever be back to the player I was, or will I ever play like with the girls again? You know, so it was a long process. But you know, Kenny Murphy really brought me on and took me under his wing and. He was great, like, and he was like a agony aunt there on the side, you know. But his expertise and his guidance was very much valued, and and brought me all the way even to where I am today, you know. So I learned a lot, I suppose, in terms of strength and conditioning, and even diet, nutrition, uh, recovery, like, you know. So I think I kind of had to turn my mindset and just take the positive with it and say, right, this is the chance, the window of opportunity to kind of learn more and maybe evolve more as a player. I think you know over time I have in terms of earned understanding the importance of maybe the gym and strength to you know to combat or to support I suppose the field and pitch sessions but I suppose I just had to take it on my chin and get on with it and go with it and and just drive on I suppose and as well as that for younger players that you know become injured you're you're trying to think that maybe you're a role model for them too you know and show them that there's kind of a, a never give up attitude and you just have to you have to keep going you know because I suppose we love it don't we <laughs> they were mad enough for it so you know, you just have to you just have to work hard at it, and and I really enjoyed the process. I suppose, you know, they kind of say you know stick to the process and and have patience with it, and just had to have a lot of patience. And luckily enough, I'm kind of blessed to say I was able to, you know, earn my space back on the team again, and and we did well that year. But uh, I I returned, so it was brilliant. You know, it was, it was a real reward to be back. Yeah, your your patience really paid off, Oshin, because when you returned, you beat Kerry in the Division Two final. Parnell Park and you were named on the team of the league as well how much of a confidence booster was that for yourself look it was brilliant I suppose I had played the, the last round of the league that year against Clare and you were a bit like oh like a newborn calf you know running around the field just to be excited to get on the ball you know and, and go for it it was like oh here I go but you know so didn't have any aspirations to be honest I suppose it was just to be able to play football and to have made it the, the semi-final team and, and the final team for the against Kerry was like a dream come true, you know, that the hard work had paid off and, and that look, a bonus was the team of the league. I mean, God didn't expect that at all, you know. So, but then again, having said that, if it wasn't for the girls and the preparation and the determination they put in throughout the league to get us there, I wouldn't have been able to maybe have any chance at any of those things. So at the end of the day, it is about all about the team and, and the unit and, and like have the experience of last Saturday as well us as a team and a unit going on again now on Saturday is going to be really important and you know we'll have to play for each other and you know there's days like that you get the good days but you also have bad days but I think you have to lose some to win some so hopefully we might have a, a key to success maybe Saturday and we can turn the tables around a bit Well fingers crossed and, and great to see you back on the field Roisin and firing all cinders Abbeyside and Waterford attacker Roisin Tobin thanks so much for your time today Thank you very much Tomas great to have good to talk to you we love Waterford. We are WLR. So after last week's one point win over down, the Waterford Camogie team travelled to Parnell Park on Saturday evening to take on Dublin. Another victory for the Dacia will send them into the All Ireland quarter finals for the fourth year in a row. Neve Rocket was player of the match last time out with six points from play. Earlier in the week, I caught up with the Dacia captain and asked her firstly about how she felt at the full time whistle. Yeah, it was such a relief, I suppose. I'm. Um when down got that point or that uh, they got the sideline they kind of came back at us we were we were well on top in the last quarter but they kind of came back at us with the sideline out of bar and then uh, we got a couple of scores but uh, they had a, ch- a chance to level it and I remember I was in on the edge of the square <laughs> no business at the wrong edge of the square anyway, and I was just praying it wouldn't go over the bar I was like oh here we go again and I was never so delighted to see the ball go over my head and over to the, out over the sideline or the, the end line so it's re- it a really big relief for me. So uh, we're delighted with the win. And I suppose it's just a bit of monkey off our backs now, I suppose. Like you were four points down with 10 minutes to go, Neve. There were a lot of questions asked at that stage. How did you get yourselves back into the game, do you think? 
Yeah, look, um, I suppose we our our starts have been noted and they haven't been the best with their all starts in uh, in in the game. So um uh, I suppose we just kept persevering. We we our fitness is never a question. We always keep going to find we always nearly finish stronger than what we start off. Um so it's about getting our start in now that we'll have to be looking at the next couple of games and trying to improve that as opposed to um as opposed to our finishing of our games. Like <clears throat> we're hoping to probably show settle yourself and try to get a couple of scores on the board and in the first fifteen just to kind of settle the ship and settle things down as opposed to kind of leaving it last minute trying to trying to claw your way back into a game, you know, some obviously in the last other couple of games it didn't work for us. And the temperatures were in the high twenties last week and even all this week as well. What is what's it been like playing in those conditions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor Doctor Sinead Fitzpatrick has as well prepped anyway, um <clears throat> taking on Dior Lights Water hydration um over the last couple of weeks. So she's been brilliant with us. Um the heat I'd, I'd much prefer I'm definitely a summer hurler as my, myself and Beth say anyway we're definitely summer hurlers so we don't really mind we don't really mind heat as much as the the slog in the winter but uh definitely take its toll on the body and I suppose just make sure that you prepare right, right and you're staying in out of the sun and hydrating right for the for the games every weekend and can you tell us a little bit about your recovery Neve? because you've told us in the past about your persistent knee injuries and the pain that you're in the day after these big championship matches is that exacerbated with the hard ground at the moment uh yeah Jeannie um <clears throat> I um we I won a free there in the last few minutes there and I was so I think I was still sore until yesterday after so uh I the ground is so hard I suppose when you get any any bit of impact on your body I think everyone's the same your legs be kind of sore and your arms be kind of sore but uh look try to try to mind as best you can try to hydrate keep the door let into you and I suppose um was out in the Gillamine there during the week, so uh, <laughs> got a bit of recovery in up to up to um, we didn't jumped in the water, so I stayed in there for a few minutes. It was actually lovely. So I suppose getting to the salt water um, is what is what's best. Shona Curran swears by it anyway in the winter time. Anyway, that's what she says that keeps her going anyway. <laughs> well, that's a little bit of a secret for all our listeners out there, Neve. Um, and I'm yeah, sure yeah. you'll be hoping to be recovered in time for this battle that's in store with Dublin. Uh, now on on Saturday, like four weeks ago, you lost to the Dubs in that Division One relegation playoff by a point. Will that be in the back of your minds now ahead of Saturday? Yeah, look, I suppose um they're they're super outfit. They bet us there uh, a couple of weeks ago in the relegation final. They're after keeping their their place up in Division One, so they've nothing to lose coming down. Um, or going playing us in uh, Parnell Park on Saturday. Do you know they'll be coming up to their home patch and. Uh, They'll be they're a brilliant outfit and I'm sure Adrian O'Sullivan's here and they'll have, have them well prepped for the game. So um look, it'll it's a big game for both teams. It'll kind of determine where you kind of finish up in the round robin stages. So uh, it's all to play for and it's probably boil down to who wants it more and who has their homework done a bit better. And just a final question for you, Neve. A couple of uh, teams have suffered in terms of COVID contacts recently. We saw the Dublin hurlers losing four on the day of the Leinster final due to being close context of a positive case. How conscious are you of that, uh, I suppose, in, in your day-to-day life? Yeah, look, definitely. I suppose um, it's it's a, it was a big problem there in, in, our, in our own county, Dungarvan, there for a while. So um, just kind of, I suppose, mind yourself, keeping your keeping your, your knit small and, like, you know, you're, you're just trying to stick to your close friends and family and just trying to keep your circle small. That, I, you know, I suppose coming up to the next couple of weeks we're playing every Saturday for three weeks so uh, especially in this time whatever about um, I suppose all the way up to now uh, it's such an important time like that you really really have to uh, be careful and be careful who you're mixing with and I suppose um, you have to be just very conscious of that I suppose when you're coming into this time of year the championship side of time no one wants to be losing any players and no one wants to be uh, down any and if you keep theirs I suppose well, Dublin versus Waterford has a five o'clock throw-in at Parnell Park on Saturday evening. Captain Neve Rocket, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks, Mel Thomas. Thanks. Nine points to seven. Rocket on the ball now, looking to flick it inside. There will be some score. This goes oh. over the bar. Well, Neve Rocket is showing up for the second half. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, and it, 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 style of play, I suppose, is something that's kind of bandied around with regards to Kamogi quite a bit, and that's exactly it. Uh, Neve Rocket, pure stylish. Lorna Porca with Tomas McCarthy on WLR.